Derek Couture here again with Concept Agritech. I'm in Union County, Kentucky today, uh, here with Drew and Kirk Greenwell of Bluegrass Ag, who just happen to be the current state soybean yield um, record holders. So we're standing in a field here with Kirk Greenwell uh, that we're actually gonna try and push and take to those kind of yields or hopefully higher again this year, Kirk. What have you done to this field? When were they planted and, and what's been done to this field so far? All right, so first of all, we planted this field on April 16th. Uh, so, you know, we, we always try to get out to a good early start. Um, probably not quite as early as what we would have liked to, but you know, weather permitting, that's, that's when we could get out. Um, at this point, these beans were post sprayed last week. Um, so you can see we got a little bit of herbicide injury going on right now, but uh, trying to bring them out of it. So with that pass, um, you know, we, we made Nutritech and uh, Sweet Fulvic we're in that pass with the herbicide. And, um, and that's something that you guys have done for several years and it's kind of a base program. I don't, I don't like to use standardized or anything like that. That's a program we run, we run a lot through Concept Agritech. But you know, you mentioned real quick there about the yellow wing that we're seeing a little bit, you know, and more than likely uh, we're looking at a little bit of manganese Correct. deficiency uh, being induced by the, by the herbicide. Um, just, just so you all understand that, that the Roundup that we're using is actually a bactericide and it's actually being harmful to some of the bacteria in the soil or within the plant that's producing or allowing it to take up the manganese and, and that's the reason why we use sweet fulvic is to try and buffer that or to provide a food source so those biology can actually bounce back a little quicker. Not to mention that the fulvic acid that's in it to help drive the, uh, the herbicides and things into the plant. So, um, but other than that, um, you know, you said Nutritech, Sweet Fulvic. Uh, what about fungicides yet on this on these beans? Because we're we, we kind of didn't hit on growth stage. I mean, we're blooming pretty strong already. I think what did we come up with eight or ten. Oh, got, eight about, or ten. got about eight fully developed nodes or eight trifolies off the main branch. Um, but you see, we do have some blooms, so we are technically in the R1 stage now. Um, we have sprayed these beans with a shot of BioHealth. Uh, we're looking to help that to get us to. You know our R1 R to R3 application of a, of a synthetic fungicide, which will be our our heavy hitter here. You bet. Well, so we've been in a couple fields this afternoon, and uh, we've noticed a few of the lower leaves, you know, with some yellowing and some spots on them. Um, what what disease would you think that would be, Kurt? Uh, Septoria brown spot. Um, I think you'll find that in, I know for sure you'll find it in every field in Kentucky and I just assume you'll find it in every field in the Midwest. So. Well, and especially with the amount of moisture and things we've had, you know, that's transmitted by, by the splashing of rainwater onto the lower leaves is how it's transmitted. But, you know, we were talking earlier that, you know, as a whole in the industry, it seems like Septoria brown spots, not really, you're not going to have too many people tell you it's a big yield, yield uh, uh, robber, you know, but, but here we are trying to potentially grow maybe 125 or maybe 150 bushel soybeans, we want to maximize everything we can. So I can say that last year, you know, with that early shot of BioHealth, I do think we saw some suppression of, of the septoria in, in our high yielding beans. Now that's not a practice that we have put into our, our standard, you know, operation across, you know, the whole, the whole bulk of all of our beans, but, you know, if we can get back-to-back -back, uh, results with the suppression of that disease, I think that could be, you know, even if it's just a small building block and, and to yep. the yield result that we got at the end of the day, then... Yeah, because we, we've kind of noticed in this field here that we do see a, a bit of a suppression or, or definitely a, a lessened, uh, lessened signs of it uh, in this field. So, so let's jump forward one more step here. So you guys have made your post-herbicide application and, and now we're going to get into the parts that maybe the, the average grower, you know, typically doesn't do and that's come back and, and spray again uh, you've already mentioned R1 R3 R we didn't mention R5 yet but you know I think we've all come to the conclusion that in order to raise a higher yielding soybeans we need to be in the field a little more than just uh, post herbicide and R3 uh, from that standpoint so so let's talk about this you know mid R1 application what what products are, are you looking at to, to add to the mix well foliar K and cowboy have been a big part of our program, and not just in, in, in this field, but in all of our fields, you know. Um, that is part of the program that we try to uh, recommend to, to our customer base. Mm -hmm. um, kind of goes along with that early shot of Nutritech, you know, followed up by, by you know, Foliar K and Cowboy, which I think are, are very important 
you know, in this early reproductive stage. Yeah, so my, my job as an agronomist is, is to give you the why, correct? So, correct. So one of the biggest things about using cow bore, obviously, is we're supplying boron, which we need all year long to help retain and, and produce more flowers and blooms, because what's a soybean plant aborts? what 50 60 percent maybe even more at least of those flowers so and then also we've talked a lot we've mentioned the word structure you know and we've got some branches and things starting to develop on these soybeans you know I, I see countless growers around the country that start to develop some branches but yet we can't put any fruit on those branches mm -hmm. you know and we, and we all talk about the Christmas tree look you know we want to do that so we need calcium to build that and over the years here uh, not only our bluegrass ag but a lot of other growers around the country have pushed yields higher by creating more fruiting sites and more flowering sites. So um, you mentioned foliar K as well. You know, I think a lot of people have just kind of resorted to putting foliar K out, potassium out at like R3 with their fungicide. But I think we were just looking at some data here a few minutes ago, and it was from the University of Illinois, actually showing where close to 70% of our potassium is taken up by R3. R4. So it's a little bit of a shift. We're trying to, after having this conversation, we're, we're going to add in the foliar K a little earlier this year to see if we can't keep these numbers up uh, from that standpoint. So, and the, the last piece that's going to go in is the amino grow. And that's our amino acid complex that will help these plants photosynthesize better. You know, being, being a plant that takes air out of the atmosphere and converts it into nitrogen. A lot of people forget that it can not only take, it can take CO2 out of the air, but it'll also take oxygen as well, which kind of makes it a little inefficient versus a corn plant can't do that. So amino acids will help convert the nitrogen or help this plant convert nitrogen uh, more efficiently, which we've also had a lot of conversations and this is maybe a teaser for later on this summer is, um, and I know you know this number, Kirk, is uh, what what is the rough, estimate of how many pounds of nitrogen it takes to raise 100 bushel beans. Gosh, you're, you're catching me off guard here, but I'm going to say it takes five to 600 pounds, just uh, some quick math. Well, you're, you're making my point for me though, is that we've all heard stories of, of 60, 70, 80 bushel soybeans is kind of the cutoff on, on being able to produce enough nitrogen on its own to get that yield. I, we feel like it's very, uh, very dependent on your soil organic matter. You know, it seems like if you've got a high organic matter of four or five percent where you're going to get that natural release from the soil, maybe you don't need to add quite as much in. So we'll leave that as a teaser for uh, for later on this season. But but uh, we're excited about this. We've got a, got a good stand and uh, we're uh, glad to have Bluegrass Ag as a partner at Concept Agritech. Um, as always, uh, you can find us through our social media channels or you can always find us at conceptagritech.com.